now. Okay, so definitely speak up if you have an issue because I don't have any of my cameras on right now. I can't see you guys. Um, so uh, work is force times distance, and that is a big deal. So let's imagine that we have a little bit of a frictionless surface here, and we're talking about a 10 kilogram object. And I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit and see if I can make that a touch bigger. All right, and let's go ahead and say that this thing is gonna start at rest, and we're gonna push it with a force of 100 Newtons. And obviously, if I think about what this thing's gonna do if it's at rest and I push on it and there's no friction, I think I saw Madeline Ames. Madeline, are you out there? I am. Hey, good morning, Madeline. Um, what would this thing do? Would it just sit there ignoring that 100 Newton force or tell me what we would see? Um, well, the box would be pushed to the right. Yep. And you know it's a force acting on a mass, so would there be an acceleration as well? Uh, yes. Yeah, and but that was when we were doing F equals ma stuff, and we're we're so far past that now. We're beyond it. We're advanced, and we're now thinking about the fact that if I were to push this thing some distance, all right, I'll go ahead and just make it a distance of five meters, all right. After I've pushed it uh, with 100 Newton force for five meters, once the box is now over here, it's gonna be uh, moving with some velocity. And that velocity would be unknown. Now what we can do is we can go back and remember that we've introduced this idea that, yeah, we've been talking for a little while now about the total initial energy equaling the total final energy. And then in the past couple of days, we introduced this idea of work uh, Nathan Dent, since I've got you there, uh, would this thing be gaining energy or losing energy from your perspective? It would be gaining energy. Absolutely. So let's kind of fill this in here. Um, Addy, what type or types of energy would we have here at the beginning when it's a block sitting on the ground at rest? Potential energy. Uh, what is its height if it's sitting on the ground, Addy? Uh, zero. So would it actually have potential energy? Nope. No. Would it have kinetic energy, Addy? No. No. So how much energy does it have to begin with? None. None. All right. And I think we can see that there's going to definitely be some work being done here. And then because it's going to be still on the ground, now it's moving, we're going to say that it has some kinetic energy at the end. So this, this is key here. We just introduced the idea that work is equal to force times distance. So we can write that as W equals FD. And so if I know what W is, and I come down here and I say, well, look, the force that's causing this thing to move is 100 Newtons, and it's acting over a distance of five meters. We're gonna then set that equal to kinetic energy, and I think, uh, goodness, who have I got? Jennifer Overdahl. Jennifer, what would we put over here for the K, the kinetic energy at the end? Um, it'd be one half mv squared, so you do one half ten times the velocity, which is unknown. Yep, and then and then we are on our way. So we've got the zero plus one hundred times five, which is five hundred. And remember that we said that a newton meter is a joule. So this was sort of previewed back when we started this unit. So this is actually five hundred joules of energy. And that's how much energy this, th this uh, block is going to have, but it's going to be all in the kinetic type of energy. And so half of 10 is 5, 5v five squared, and the rest of it is just math. 100 equals v squared. And double check me here, holler if I've done my math wrong, but I'd square root that and get 10. How is that so far? Is that okay? I don't, I'm not looking at you guys, so give me something verbal here. Go ahead and unmute and tell me if you have any issues. All right, so that is the essence of what we're getting at here with the concept of work. All right, let me go ahead and scooch this up here. Um, so let's go ahead and do just a, a couple of, of these types of questions here. Let's imagine that uh, I am looking at an incline and I've got a little bit of friction down here, all right? 
And let's say that I, I don't know, I, don't, I know that this is a 10 meter long section. And let's say that we're going to start with our five kilogram object sitting on top of our uh, 10 meter high hill and we'll start it at rest. And so here's the question that I want to figure out, all right? Let's say that this thing uh, goes down the hill and as it goes down the hill here, uh, I'm trying to remember who I've got on the call and I don't really know. So uh, someone just holler out, as it goes down the hill, this uh, potential energy is turning into what type of energy class? Kinetic. All right, perfect. Now, once it gets to the bottom, that kinetic energy, do you think it's gonna be gaining energy or losing energy as it slides across this rough mm -hmm. patch? Perfect, it's gonna lose energy. And so by the time we get over here, all right, Let's imagine that this is only now going one meter per second, all right? So here's the question. I wanna know how large is the friction force? And so you're like, oh, I don't know. How on earth would I do this? And then you're like, well, wait a second. We've been doing these problems where we take the total initial energy and we definitely have an energy change here. It's not gonna be an energy gain, it's gonna be an energy loss. Up here was an energy gain. And then we're gonna set that equal to the final energy, all right? Um, let me hear from somebody. What type or types of energy would we say we have at the beginning here when we're at rest on top of the 10 meter high hill? Gravitational. Okay, so I'm gonna write UGI. And that's all I have. Now in going from here all the way down to over here, do I have a work term to consider? Yeah. Yep, so I'm gonna go ahead and put plus W. And then what type or types of energy do I have out here at the end? Kinetic. Okay. And so with that, we're off to the races and we say, okay, we're gonna go MGH plus work is equal to one half mv squared. M is mass of five. G is 9.8. Height is 10. So that's capturing the amount of potential energy that I have up here. Now, if I think about this work term, we just said that work is equal to force times distance. And I'm sorry I'm picking on you here, Madeline, but I just don't remember who else is on the call. Madeline, which of these do I know for the work term? Do I know the force or the distance? Distance. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and say, look, let's put plus F times a distance of 10 meters, because that's how long that friction force, which is what F is, if you want me to, I could put force of friction. That's how long that friction force is gonna be acting on the box for 10 meters. And then we go ahead and say, well, I've got one half times mv squared, so I'm gonna go one half five, and then I told you what the velocity was at the end. And I now have a way to find the missing friction force. So math-wise here, that's gonna be uh, 98 times five, and you guys can double check me here. I think that's 490. Yeah. Plus force of friction times 10. Five times one is five, that's 2.5. So we literally have virtually no energy left. So that friction force really gobbled up our energy. So we just finish up the algebra and that becomes 487.5 divided by 10. So I get a force of friction of, double check me, 48.75 Newtons. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I could take it one step further and I could say, hey, what was mu? And we could then remember that mu is force of friction over normal force. And so sometimes it's helpful to come up here, and I'll move my hand in just a second, draw a quickie little diagram. We know that if it's a five kilogram box, this would be 49 newtons for gravity and a normal force of 49 newtons. This arrow would be my friction force. And so we could go ahead and figure out mu by saying, well, if the friction was 48.75 divided by 49, we're gonna get something really close to one. All right, now that, I'm gonna be quiet because someone else is trying to talk here. Go ahead. Force negative. Say that one more time. 
Is the friction force negative? Yeah, is that Kate Schwab? Yeah. Yep, because I got sloppy on my signs. The friction force would be negative, and, and I'm thankful that you said that. Because, and the reason that that negative sign shows up, it's there to remind me that, gosh darn it, that friction, is that a helping or a hindering force? Is it putting energy in or is it taking it out? It is taking it out. Taking it out. So the negative sign makes total sense. But when we come over here and we do the mu calculation, the actual size of the friction force. The only reason that negative is there is to remind us that it's a hindering force. We don't use the negative sign over here because the size of the friction force is 48.75, okay? So Kate, thanks for catching that. Totally important there. All right, let me pause for a second. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the sharing, go to my window of all of you guys. Okay. Now I'm seeing folks. Isaac Martin, I like the Chicago thing there. That's awesome. All right. Good morning, Jacob. Good morning, Emily and Aiden. Good to see you. Henry, nice to see you. Hello, Maud. All right. And I think I captured everybody else. So um, how is that so far? Force times distance. Is that super scary? You can give me some sort of a thumbs up or a clap or a isn't this the universal sign? Isn't this clapping instead of if clapping is too overstimulating for you? I don't know. All right. Hey, um, I'm going to go ahead and pause the record. I'm going to go back to sharing my screen. And it might take a second for it to show up. Please come back. Please come back. Okay. Uh, someone holler if we're seeing those wiggles there. Yep. Oh, Okie doke. I All see right. you. Perfect. So let's do this. Um, so all we're doing is just remembering that anytime we have work, work is going to be force times distance. All right. So let's do one last problem here. And let's imagine that we have <clears throat> a rough patch. We don't know the distance here. And if this is where the rough patch is, we're going to assume every place else is frictionless. All right. We're going to get a height here of, let's go ahead and say, four meters. And here's what I want to figure out. All right. I know that I want this thing to have a velocity of one meter per second right here. Let's go ahead and make the math easy with a one kilogram object. And what I want to figure out is if this thing starts out moving at 10 meters per second, I want to know how long does this rough patch have to be for this object to get up to this height and have exactly this velocity. All right, so this is our initial conditions, sitting on the ground going 10 meters per second. Here's my distance. There's definitely some friction in here. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm gonna give you a mu value of 0.2. And so the question is, how long is this? You wanna immediately think energy. And then you just look at it and decide what type or types of energy. Aiden Burke, uh, can you hear me okay over there, bud? Loud and clear, yeah. All right. Tell me what type or types of energy we should put here. Um, kinetic. Okay. And we know that that's one half m v squared. Let's think about the work term. Did I see Maud in there? I think I did. Morning, Maud. How are you? Good. All right, so work is force times distance. So we're gonna kind of do a little side calculation. If I think about the forces acting on my one kilogram block, what are the forces that we have? What's the down force? Gravity. Yep, 9.8 up force. Normal. Yep, and then can I find the friction force here, Maud? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I know mu. So there's a lot of thinking and sort of calculating here. So I'm going to do friction force over normal force. 
9.8 times 0.2. Uh, what is that? Is that 1.96? Yeah. Okay. So, Maud, big important question coming back at you here. Is this friction force, is that a helping or a hindering force when I think about it here? Hindering. Yeah. So, what sign must go in front of that 1.96? Negative. Yep. So this is basically me just doing a little side calculation because I know I have to have a work term here, right? I know I'm looking for W and I know I need to have the right thing. So this is all the thinking that I did just to come up with W. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in 1.96 times D. And then we're going to be finishing this off here. Uh, let's see here. Isaac, I don't know if you can hear me or not there. Isaac, you there? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. What type or types of energy would I have over here at the end? That was my kinetic at the beginning. We did our work. What have we got? Potential energy. Definitely have potential energy because I'm on top of a hill. I also told you that it was going a little bit. So what else so does it have? Bud? As well. Perfect. All right. So we're going to go KF. Isaac, go ahead and fill in some stuff here for the potential with some of the numbers that we have. What, what, should, what should we write? Do you remember the formula for potential energy? No. Okay. It's M times G times H. So we're going to go mass of one. Gravity, the acceleration of gravity is 9.8. Height of four. And then we're going to say, okay, uh, Isaac, do you remember the formula for kinetic energy? No, I do not. Okay, it's one half mv squared. So we're gonna go one half mass of one times the velocity of one squared. And then it's just math from there, guys. I'm gonna do the math and you guys can double check me here and see if I make a careless mistake. I think that's 50. And maybe Kate will catch me on a, a math mistake again, signs. Isaac, is that is that thirty nine point two? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think I'm on it. So I've got fifty minus one point nine six d equals thirty nine point seven. Ooh, yucky decimals. So here's where I need a little bit of help. One nine six d. That's going to be a negative something. Negative ten point three. And then we divide both sides, and I definitely need help with this one. And the nice thing is we were careful with our signs. Thankfully, Kate didn't have to correct me there. The negative signs cancel out. D should be positive. 5.25 or 5.26. Okay. I, just one person. I'm sorry. I heard a couple voices. Uh, 5.26. And that distance would be in meters. Okay. So work is a pretty powerful little thing. I'm going to go ahead and stop.